let's try something new together. I told many of you that I have a podcast that I've started and I just taped an episode, my second episode, and it's about 40 lessons in life I learned from my mother. And I believe they're things that made me a better person. They're things that made me enjoy life a little bit more. And I thought I would share them with you. So for this YouTube video, what I'm going to do is just do some overlay of relaxing videos and photos in case you want to watch and, tr and also listen, or you could have it playing in the background. If you like this concept, please let me know below because that way I can do a lot more of this. Otherwise, I will work on another plan. Hello, hello, Linda Smith Davis here with New England Fine Living. And I thought today I would share 40 things that my mother taught me. Now, this is a list I put together on May 14th, 2017. I posted it on my blog. It was a somewhat of a Mother's Day gift that I created for my mom. And the things that I wrote down, they were either things that she specifically said to me, they may have been words that she expressed and I heard them, or just by watching her actions. They are things that I learned to either make me a better person, help me be a bit happier, and just to, it, it actually rounded me out to be the woman that I am today. Now, the first one I put on my list was be polite. And that's something that I was always raised with, you know, saying please and thank you and excuse me. But being polite is being aware and respecting others and their feelings. Um, you know, when you're polite, not everybody notices that, but when you're disrespectful or rude, they notice. But if you're polite, people seem to gravitate to you. They, they're comfortable around you. If you're rude, who would want to be near that, right? Number two, hold the door for those behind you. Now, how many times have you walked to a door with your hands full and somebody right in front of you steps in and then the door shuts? It's horrible, right? So why not just automatically hold the door open for somebody who's coming or going for no reason at all? They might have their hands free, but you know what? Karma. Karma will stand in and take over. And when you need the door held open for you, somebody will be there. I guarantee it happens all the time. So... Once again, hold the door open for those behind you. It just shows, once again, number one, you're being polite. Now, number three is a good one, and I do try to live by this, but there's been times that I haven't, and I have gotten myself in trouble. But the third one is, when you talk about someone, pretend they are standing behind you. Would you still say what you wanna say? Now. If you have somebody that's been giving you issues and problems and you're sharing your grievances with somebody else, would you like that information to get back to them? If they were standing behind you, would you still say the same thing? If you don't say anything negative, you will never have to worry about that person knowing how you really feel unless you say it to them yourself. I do believe if you need to get something off of your shoulders, you to talk to the person directly versus hearsay or complaining to somebody else. So once again, number three, I wish I have listened to that before because I've gotten myself in a whole heap of trouble before. Number four, make your bed each morning. Yes, there are times that I roll out of bed and, and maybe my husband's still sleeping or I'm not feeling good and I know I'm going to be sliding back into bed. But if you make your bed each morning, it makes the ritual of going to bed that much more pleasant. Your sheets are nice and crisp and laid out. There's no bedspread or blankets all askew and bunched up. It makes for a really nice ritual to fold back the bedding, slide into bed. It's almost like you're at a hotel. They get it ready for you. Why not do the same for yourself in your own home? Number five, it's okay to be overdressed at social events or gatherings. It's better to be overdressed than underdressed. I do live by that completely. You know, if I'm going to an event and I don't know how to dress, I dress up. I would much rather be the person in the room who is overdressed than underdressed. That is a preference. I understand that. But this is how I was raised, and it has never gone astray with me. And I don't feel awkward when I'm overdressed. And usually when I go and I feel I'm overdressed, 
Luckily, there's always one or two women who've outdone me with the overdress department, and then I feel completely comfortable. Number six, always wear lipstick. Now, I know for some, you're probably scrunching up your face and saying that's a weird one or that's horrible to think that way, but it's, once again, some of us feel better when we have our lipstick on. Some of you understand this. And even during COVID, under my mask, I would have lipstick on. And there'd be days when I don't wear lipstick and I go visit my mother. It's kind of funny. She does mention, oh, you're looking a little worn out today. Would you like to borrow some lipstick? And it's just a way she was maybe raised. It's the way she raised me. And I do like wearing lipstick. And it's also moisturizing for your lips if you have the right one. Number seven is pretty self-explanatory and also kind of goes back to number one of being polite, but you get more out of life with sugar than vinegar. And how true is that? Number eight, the scent of fresh sheets that have been hanging outside during the day make for an amazing night's sleep. Now, some of us can't hang our sheets out, but if you do use a dryer sheet or spray your linen with a bed spray or some sort of essential oil mixed with your distilled water, it really does help set the mood and help you with your night's sleep. Number nine is smiling when you don't feel like it, it will make you feel better. And it's so true, you know, like laughter's the best medicine. Like right now, if you're feeling pretty crappy right now, I dare you just to sit right there, even if you're driving your car and the people next to you think you're weird going by you, smile. Put that smile on your face and see how you feel. It's hard to feel not happy when you're smiling. Number 10 is be on time. Now, of course, there's going to be circumstances when traffic makes you run late or maybe your baby spit up on you and you have to change a shirt, but that's when you make a phone call and let somebody know that you're going to be running late. But if there's no reason and you're just lazy and going slow and you're late for an appointment or coffee with a girlfriend, that's rude. And you're pretty much telling them that their time is not important and that their schedule is not important. If you're on time, you're letting that other person know that you realize that it's special and they are important too. Number 11 is housework and gardening can be very therapeutic, especially if you don't look at it as a chore. And how true this is, there are days that I wake up and I jump into housework at 5.30 in the morning, not because I have to, but because I look forward to it. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't always look forward to house cleaning, but there's times that I'm looking forward to just spiffing up the home, getting it nice and clean smelling, putting away a lot of the clutter, because emotionally, that will make me feel better. And when I get rid of the weeds in the garden, then I'm allowed to see the beauty of the flowers in my herbs. And I'm also able to hear my own thoughts when I make the time for housework and gardening. So give that a try. If you look at housework and working around your home as a chore, maybe look at it a little differently. Number 12 is getting up early allows you to enjoy one of the most beautiful parts of the day. For those of you who do this already, you understand what I mean. You know, you hear the birds singing, the sun is rising, and I guess it depends on what part of the country you live in and where your windows are and what you can see and hear. But this is something that I've always done. When I sleep in late, it's usually because I'm sick or I a very late night of insomnia, and I feel guilty that I'm missing out on the beauty of the day that I missed out on. Um, I miss the birds, I miss the sunrise, I miss that quiet time before everybody else awakes. If you're not a morning person, that's okay. You know, you might prefer your night times, but waking up early for me is one of my simple pleasures. Number 13 is even when you're dependent or interdependent in a relationship, it is still very important to be independent. Now, my husband and I are wonderful relationship. We have a very interdependent relationship on each other. We, we work well together. But my goal and my whole priority is that if something happened to him, I would still be able to take care of myself emotionally, physically, financially, and be there if our children needed us to be there and be strong. 
Number 14, it's kind of a little old fashioned thinking and some people might once again, kind of like the lipstick, not look at it the same way I do, but it's match your shoes with your outfits. And I always do that. And one thing, it gives a cohesive look. I'm short, so I feel like if I don't, it kind of breaks the eye and gives that little stop and stutter effect. So that's just something that I've learned by watching my mother. Her shoes always matched her dresses and her outfits. I do the same. Number 15 is be patient. And without even thinking this through, I think one example would be if you're in the grocery line and you're behind somebody who's slowly counting out the coins and you're in a hurry and they're just taking their time or chatting with the woman behind the register, that's annoying, I get it. But there's going to be a time when you're the person at the register and somebody behind you is in a hurry. And how does that feel if they're making you feel pushed when you are trying to do something right or need to get something across to somebody else? Be patient. Number 16 is if you help others, it will come back to you someday. And that's kind of like holding the door open. It's karma. If you're nice, somebody will be nice back. Number 17, volunteer your time to nonprofit groups. And this one doesn't have to be something that takes a lot of time. It could be going to a soup kitchen one time, or it could be that you're a member on the historic committee or part of the garden club who helps plant flowers out in front of your town hall. Something that is selfless, something that's going to help others. Number 18 is look at the beauty, architecture, and history of the buildings that surround you. And that will just kind of help you bring yourself into the moment. You can see the detail and the thought that was put into those buildings. The people and the time that they put towards creating either homes that are going to keep us safe or buildings where we can do business, it kind of makes you appreciate a little bit more your surroundings. Number 19 is hard work never goes unnoticed. And I'm going to say that some of you might disagree with this. You might be working really hard at work and maybe your coworker is the one that's getting all of the compliments or takes credit for it. But you know what? If you work hard at something, there is somebody that notices. If you don't work hard, it's going to really be noticed. Okay, we're at the halfway point here with number 20, a great one, live life to the fullest. And that means something different for everybody. It's like fine living. You create what that life to the fullest means to you. But it means don't just sit home, sitting here on your couch, eating a bag of chips, when maybe you could go outside and take a walk. And once again, I don't wanna project what is right or wrong for what I think, because I love to sit on my sofa with a bag of chips and watch a movie. But that's not living my life to the fullest. Number 21, our bodies are our temple. Take care of it. Now, this can mean finally making the appointment to go get that mammogram or a doctor's appointment, setting that schedule to have your teeth cleaned or a cavity taken care of. It could be as simple as washing your face each morning or before you go to bed, your vitamins, um, working out, getting a good night's sleep. It's what you can do to take care of your body Number 22, I actually get a smile on my face when I read this one because I remember when my mother said this to me when I was little. When peer pressure happens, ask yourself, would my parents be proud of me if they found out? And how true is that? If somebody, I'm just gonna say something that's not true, but if maybe a childhood friend of mine would say, go steal that, would my parents be proud of me? As an adult, if you did something and you questioned yourself, Ask yourself, would you be proud of yourself? Would your parents be proud of you? Would your children or your coworkers be proud of you? Number 23 is, it's okay to say no. Don't always feel like you have to say yes to an invite or if somebody asks you to take on a project that you're not prepared to. It's okay to say no. And you don't have to give an excuse of why you're saying no. Just let it be. If they ask you, tell them the truth. Number 24 was said to me, it, so it might mean some to some people and nothing to others, but even when you love your children equally, each love will be different and special in its own way. I used to feel guilty for loving my, one of my children for one aspect that the other didn't have and vice versa. And my mother 
kept reminding me how different my sister and I are. And there was such an amount of equal love there. But it's true, you're going to love one for one thing and one for another. Number 25, listen to your dreams. They are very telling. And some of them can be so bizarre. But if you start to think about what happened the day or two before or what your thoughts are, really write down your dreams. And then you can get online or get a book. And some of them are pretty amazing when you look up the reasoning for some of your dreams. Some are going to be very telling. And some are going to make you scratch your head and say, what is this dream trying to tell me? And it could be quite enlightening. Number 26 is woman's intuition is very real. Now, my mother, my daughter, my even my son, we listen to our intuition. And a lot of times, if you think that's a bunch of hooey, I'm going to think that you just don't listen to those little signs and those cues that you might hear sometime. You might push it aside. I know my sister said she doesn't always play into the woman's intuition and she doesn't understand it. You just need to be in tune to it. And the more you listen to your thoughts, or maybe even your dreams, you will realize that you might be tuning into your intuition. It's like when you think of a friend and soon after the phone rings and it's your friend. That's an intuition. Number 27, all things happen for a reason. And this could be good or bad. And a lot of times we focus on the bad things that happen and wonder why. Well, there was a reason for it. And sometimes it's hard to remind ourselves of that. Number 27 is all things happen for a reason. Now that could be something that's good. It could be something that's bad. And a lot of times we seem to focus on the bad things and ask ourselves, why did that happen? But it happened for a reason. It could be that it was something that we needed to learn. It was an experience. Maybe we could teach somebody what we learned from that experience. It happened for a reason. Think it through. Maybe you got fired from a job, but the reason is maybe you really wanted to go for another job or you weren't happy there. There's always a reason. Think it through. Number 28, keep in touch with old friends. And reading this one right now makes me realize that I have to get my acting gear with that. I have let some of my old friendships go to the wayside, not because they're not special to me, but because I've been maybe hyper-focusing on my health and things in my own household, but friends are very important. And those are people that you can share with and learn from. Those are people that you may have just met that can grow as a friendship or old childhood friends. And just recently, my mother started calling friends and people that she hasn't talked to in a while, and it really started a chain reaction. I ended up then hearing from my uncle who called to say hello, who lives in across the country, because my mother called him out of the blue. And then he called some other people. And then I started calling other people. It's really a chain reaction, and it's a feel-good moment when you talk to old friends. Number 29 is very similar and works off of the housework and gardening and not making it a chore. If you play music while doing housework, it can make you dance and enjoy the moment. And it's so true. I do love putting on some of my favorite music, whether it's current pop music, 80s music, classical music. It depends on my mood, but it really does help the moment. And I enjoy cleaning when I have music on. Are you still with me? We're at number 30 and then only 10 more to go. Number 30, you never stop learning. Never do. Every single day, you're learning something new, even when something happens, remember? So think about it. What did you learn today? Number 31 is something that I need to focus on myself a little bit more. It says you will never feel your age if you allow yourself to think and feel young. Now, I always do think young but with some of my health issues I've allowed myself to feel old and that was self-imposed on myself. I can do and feel and be as young as I want right now but I have allowed myself to feel old and this is something I need to work on. That even could be as simple as coloring my grays, getting out for a walk, anything. Number 32 is listen to your heart. And that could be thought of as a woman's intuition. It could be a feeling when you have to make a decision. But if you listen to your heart, 
It usually means you already know the decision that needs to be made. You just need to listen to it. Number 33 is keep moving. Your body will thank you for it. Now, of course, if you have a medical condition that you know of, or if you think you have a medical condition, check with your doctor first, of course. But this just means keep moving, whether it's a walk, maybe it's just getting up and down from your office desk. It could mean going out and just taking some deep breaths in the air. Keep moving. Your body needs it and it will thank you for it. Number 34, you can never be too old to follow your dreams and passions. Go for it. I'm going to say that again. You can never be too old to follow your dreams and passions. It's not too late for you to go back to school. It's not too late to take a cooking class. It's not too late to take dance lessons. It's not too late to start a YouTube channel. It's not too late to start anything. The only one holding you back might be you. Number 35, reach for the brass ring. It's somewhat following number 34 that follow your dreams and your passions. But think about it, if you don't reach for that brass ring and you want it, somebody else will grab it first. Number 36, this is kind of a funny one that it's okay to have breakfast for dinner. And when I was a child, my mother would serve sometimes breakfast for dinner. I don't know if it's just because she wanted to shake things up. I don't know if it's because she didn't have other things in the fridge to create a dinner. But I used to look forward to having breakfast for dinner. And in my own home now, when I do that, I get looked at like I'm very strange. And it's so funny, I'm like, it's okay to have breakfast for dinner. And I don't understand why it's not. It's like having dessert for breakfast, I guess. Some people just aren't used to it. It's like saying you can't have dessert for breakfast, but if you think about it, what's a donut? Number 37 is name brands don't matter, but quality does. Now, I totally believe in that right now, but as a teenager and young child, nah, -uh, no way, I did not believe in that. As I went to school with my no-name brand L.L. Bean type boots or my corduroys that weren't the name brand Lee's or Levi's, I was a little bit upset with that. But as a grown-up now, I totally get it. I had quality items. My mother was putting me in quality items that didn't fall apart and they kept me warm and they kept my feet dry. And I kind of follow that today. I don't have to have a name brand to be happy as long as it's quality. Now there are things that when I do have a name brand, sure, I feel a little bit proud about it because I might have saved up for it, I worked hard for it, or it does have a lot of quality and it is a good product. Okay, we're starting to get near the end here. Number 38. This has been said to me so much and I hear it in my head all the time. Form follows function. You're designing a kitchen and you make it beautiful. It's drop dead gorgeous, magazine worthy. But you make the cabinet so narrow that you can't fit your large appliances in there or enough room for your utensils. That would be function following form. Number 39 is when it comes to objects and cleaning the clutter, don't love something that can't love you back. So let's say you have a sweater. You say, oh, I love this sweater. I don't know if I should get rid of it or not. Does that sweater love you back? Think about it. When you're really getting rid of the clutter and things you don't like, do they love you as much as you love it? All right, now that we're at number 40, don't be upset with me, but I thought of two more things that my mother always say to me. So I'm going to share those after this. But number 40 is don't lie. If you do, you will have to remember that lie and story for the rest of your life. It's so true. If you tell the truth, you never have to remember what you said. It's always going to be the truth. So adding number 41, don't let the tail wag the dog. And that is when you're letting outside influences change your thoughts and your actions. Be the body, be the one that makes all the thoughts and don't let that tail wiggle the rest of your body. Does that make sense? Okay, I promise to stop at the lessons after this one. Number 42, eat the elephant a bite at a time. And my mother used to say this to me when I would get overwhelmed, which I do get overwhelmed very easily as an ADHD person with dyslexia. And that always helped me put things into perspective. I would have this very large project I wouldn't know where to start. And she would say, 
eat the elephant a bite at a time. I know it's kind of graphic and maybe gross to think about, but it does help and it works. And I thought of this when I actually heard the saying last night on a, I think it was a Hallmark channel. I was so surprised and shocked. I know she didn't make that saying up, but to hear it again, it was just a reminder that when I'm feeling overwhelmed, I just have to do things a little at a time. Well, if you're still with me going on to 25 minutes later, thank you so much. And I hope some of these lessons have helped you. You may have known a lot of these. If you have some of your own lessons you'd like to share with us, comment below or you can direct message me. I might use them in a future video, a future podcast, a future blog post. Um, if you have some questions or some topics you'd like to hear me speak about or share, I'd love to know that as well. But thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already, please subscribe. It lets me know that you enjoy what I'm sharing. It helps me with the algorithm, whether it's on YouTube or my podcast and other social sites. It's very helpful. And I want to thank you once again. You are my inspiration and you help keep me going. Bye now. If you like what you hear so far, make sure you never miss an episode by clicking the subscribe button right now. This podcast is supported by our partners and kindred spirits, but your support is also very much appreciated. In between episodes, make sure to visit our website, newenglandfineliving.com, and our YouTube channel, New England Fine Living Online.